Hello again. I decided last minute to do a Charlotte tiramisu for a dear friend's birthday coming up. Shh, don't say anything. I'm not going to mention names. So the ingredients are as follows. You got a cup of heavy cream, two teaspoons of vanilla. I'm going to put them, lock it up, put it maybe medium weight. And while the heavy cream and vanilla are beaten, being beaten up, I'm adding half a cup of sugar. You can use granulated or powdered. Once the whipped cream is done, I put it aside and now I'm going to whip two cups of mascarpone cheese at medium and I will add half a cup of sugar and let it all nice and creamy so there's different steps of course for charlotte cakes this here is seven inch spring form pan and I'm using about 17 of the lady fingers you can get them at the store you can buy these ones they're italian ones from the international stores it really doesn't matter and i made some chocolate ganache and the recipe is on my tube and after i cut about an inch off the bottom so it you know the the lady finger can stand up i'm gonna dip just a little bit in the chocolate ganache just to cover just the tip of it and we're gonna line it up that way we're gonna continue on with the tip of the lady finger and after you make the uh, chocolate ganache you're gonna let it cool off a bit then you're going to put the good side, whatever is the best side, facing outward because once it's ready to remove the sides of the pan, you want the nice chocolate ones showing up to the outside of the pan. So you continue that until it's all filled. In the meantime, we got a cup of espresso or strong coffee and I cooled it off and I put a little bit of um, frangelica which is a hazelnut liqueur that will go well with the hazelnut Nutella that will be in one of the layers of the cakes so we're gonna finish that whole side so now that we got all the lady fingers with the beautiful chocolate ganache, just the tip. So once we take the, the sides off in about 24 hours or so, it will not stick in the pan the whole lady finger, just the tips of it. And you can just very, very lightly with a knife, a paring knife, just if it gives you a hard time removing the sides, you can just kind of scrape it off slowly with a knife. Now, the pieces of lady fingers that were left behind, the one inches, I'm gonna dip into the coffee with the frangelica, or you can use any other liqueur you like. If you have an espresso machine, even better. I don't, so I put my setting on strong and I make a small batch and it works. So we're gonna dip that all the way around. You can also use a little bit more of the lady fingers if you need any. Until the base is all filled. So now that the base is all covered, we're gonna go to our bowl that has the whipped mascarpone 
with the whipped cream and put one layer down and kind of smooth it up until the bottom is filled to all sides. I'm going to stretch it out. Since it's a small pan, it's best to be using a small spatula just so we can fill out all the little crevices here. Make sure it's all covered. And as much as you can, just smooth it out. Then, I have some finely chopped pistachios. Maybe I'll have about a quarter of a cup of it. We're gonna dust that a little bit. The first layer. And now we're gonna use the chocolate Nutella with the mascarpone whipped cream. We're going to put one layer down. Again, we're going to smooth it out. Ever so beautifully. Soak your lady fingers in the coffee mix. Just don't soak it too much because it absorbs it really fast. You don't want it to be all mushy. Just enough that it contains the beautiful flavors of coffee and hazelnut liquor or amaretto. I usually like to use sambuca, white sambuca which is wonderful, but since there's, um, we're adding some nuts to it, pistachio, I thought it'd be better to use um, some nutty liqueur, the closest to pistachio, the hazelnut. So there's my second layer, and just kind of smooth it down. Now we're going to go back and do another white layer and smooth it out and that would be the last layer here. And again that's the mascarpone mixed with the whipped cream and mixed with some sugar. Smooth it out nicely. See how it's touching just the outside of the chocolate lady fingers. Yummy. I can't wait to remove the side and see how it looks inside. All these layers of white and chocolate and pistachio. And now, I might want to put some more chocolate ganache on the top. It should be warm enough that it's spreadable, but not warm enough that will melt everything else under it. So I like to cool it after I cook it on the stove. I take it out, put it on some kind of a cooling mat so you don't want it too hard that it won't spread but you also want it nice and cool 
and of course you can tell there's absolutely no calories at all in that dessert well thanks to coronavirus I've been doing a lot of cooking and baking and sharing all my recipes and information with you and I appreciate it all if you can visit my channel and like share subscribe that be very very helpful now that we covered the whole top of the ganache we can put another layer of pistachio pistachio and chocolate go very well together that bright green I call it gold dust against the dark brown it's just absolutely beautiful and I can't wait for my friend to blow the candle on that cake she's Italian so she will much appreciate that dessert and I'm gonna put a little plastic cover on top but you don't want the the top to be smeared so I put a little bit of toothpicks sticking out that way you can put the plastic wrap on top of it and it won't directly touch the cake just make sure you remove each and every one of them so they don't drown down there and get somebody choked just take um, count of it and we're removing the plastic out all the toothpicks are gone voila see you in 24 hours where it stays all nice and cool and mixed really well together and ready to be cut